Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us viewing our Thursday night Bible study. I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your journey in the future. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, saturate our minds with the thoughts of your peace that is beyond our ability to understand as we go through this lesson and the remainder of our lives. In our Prince of Peace name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Uh, our study tonight uh, is centered on uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, or 6 and 7. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, that reads, I do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, last week we studied about the focus of uh, rest and peace comes through two sources, which are faith and uh, Jesus's word. This week, our focus thought is right praying for God's peace, which surpasses all understanding. Again, right praying for God's peace, which surpasses all understanding. Uh, Paul does not write in our verses uh, uh, saying, pray about this or pray about that. We so often want to be told what to do so that perhaps we will be relieved of the responsibility of whether we do right or whether we do wrong. Paul is uh, too wise to uh, give us a bunch of do's and don'ts that we will automatically or quickly turn off to. He uses three different words to describe right praying. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Right praying involves all three. The word prayer is the general word for making requests known to the Lord. It carries the idea of adoration, devotion, and worship. Whenever we find ourselves worrying, our first actions ought to be to get along with God and worship him. Now, adoration is what is needed, and we must see the greatness and majesty of God first of all. We must realize that he is big enough to solve all of our problems. And another way of looking at it is like this. He's bigger than any of our problems. Since we equate size or bigness as for, you know, if somebody big, then we think that they can handle somebody smaller or their size. Uh, too often, we rush into God's presence hurriedly and tell him our needs when we ought to approach his throne calmly and in genuine reverence. The first step in right praying is adoration. Now, the second one is supplication. Supplication is an earnest sharing of our needs and our problems. Earnest. Be honest about it. Our needs should not consist of things outside of God's will. So therefore, there should be some thought before we speak. Uh, work at not asking God to provide something you're not trained to use or for things that will not give him glory. You would not expect uh, someone to, to turn you a loose with an automobile and you don't know how to drive or to give you a gun and you don't know how to handle it, you haven't been trained. At, at, as, as we ask God to prepare us for what he wants us to have. Don't ask God for a new house uh, that you're not going to take care of. 
but allow it to run down, that does not bring God glory. If you're not going to be a good steward over something, we ought to be careful at how quickly we ask God for it. Don't ask for anything you're not ready to be a good steward of. Don't expect God to strike somebody down just because you don't like the way they looked at you last Sunday. There is no place for half-hearted, insincere, selfish prayer. While we know that we are, uh, are not heard for our much speaking, as stated in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, still we realize that our Father wants to be uh, uh, earnest and wants us to be earnest in our ask, asking. He wants us to honestly ask Him for what we desire and need. Now, concerning desires and needs, we, we understand that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He provides sunshine, rain, uh, uh, wind, air, water, whether we ask him or not. But we ought to understand that God wants us to be honest in our asking. That means that we ought to take some time and think about it before we Put it to God. Uh, now, this is the way Jesus prayed in the garden. In, in Hebrews chapter 5 uh, and verse 7, and while he, his closest disciples were sleeping, Jesus was sweating great drops of, of blood, drops of uh, great, great drops of sweat like blood. And in the, on, on Calvary, he was uh, sweating blood like he blood was running down like water or sweat. OK, got that right. Now, Hebrews chapter five, verse seven says in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayer and supplication with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence to God, to his heavenly father. So supplication is not a matter of carnal energy, but of spiritual intensity. I, I think I need to say that again. I hear somebody saying, say that again. Supplication is not a matter of carnal energy, but of spiritual intensity intensity. Romans chapter 15, verse uh, 30 in the message version says, I have one request, dear friends, pray for me. This is Paul talking to uh, the people of the church. He says, pray for me, pray strenuously with and for me to God the Father through the power of our master Jesus Christ through the love of the Holy Spirit. In other words, he was saying that, that we need to focus on the Father that we are talking to. We need to focus on Jesus who opened the door for us to go to the Father, and we ought to have our minds also on the Holy Spirit that ushers us into God's presence. And we should not expect the, the Holy Spirit to take us into God's throne room with a bunch of mess. Colossians chapter four, verse 12, the message version again says, uh, Ephorus, who is one of you, says hello. This is somebody that was with Paul and he's writing to uh, another group and he says, this person who's one of you said, he's here with me, he says, hello. What a trooper he has been, Paul said. He's been tirelessly in his prayers for you, praying that you all stand firm, mature, and confident in everything God wants you to do. And we ought to pray that way for one another. Now, after adoration and supplication comes appreciation, giving thanks to God. Ephesians 5.20 
uh, the English Standard Version says, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse uh, 15 through 17, we go back to the message version, says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, with each other's needs. In step with each other, we, we need to be unified. As a nation, we need to be unified and and, 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 and we've got to have peace. We, we should, we, we've got to find a way that, that, that uh, we can have peace instead of all of the not trusting each other. And if we learn to pray for each other, then we're on the road to success. He goes on to say, none of this going off and doing your own thing. No, no, doing, you know, being a renegade. I'm doing it my way. No, I don't like that way. I'm going to do it my way. He says, none of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to God and thanksgiving to each other. When people are nice to you, they don't have to be. They choose to be. When God blesses us, he don't have to. He chooses to. And the least we can do is live a life of thankfulness. Verse 16 says, let the words, word of Christ, the message, the gospel, have the run of the house. His word, his instructions to us ought to be what we live by. It says, give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing, sing your heart out to God and let every detail in your lives, words and actions, whatever be done in the name of the master Jesus. Think, thanking God, the father, every step of the way. Unquestionably, the father enjoys hearing his children say, thank you. And you do too. When Jesus healed 10 lepers, only one of the 10 returned to give thanks. And I think that was our lesson for last week or the sermon for last week, uh, Luke uh, chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. And we wonder if the percentage is higher today. One-tenth out of ten came back to say thank you. You will note that right praying is not something every Christian can do immediately because right praying depends on the right kind of mind. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8, King James Version says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. And then Proverbs chapter 26, verse uh, 16, uh, the message version says, dreamers fantasize their self-importance. They think that they are smarter than even a whole college faculty. That's the message version. In other words, he's saying that, that we ought to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We ought to not see ourselves as being all of that in a bag of chips so important that people got to make an appointment to talk to us. Dreamers. In other words, you go around think, dreaming about being uh, important. Dreamers fan fantasize their self-importance 
and they think that they are smarter than a whole college faculty. This is why Paul's formula for peace is found at the end of Philippians and not at the beginning. If we have the single mind of Philippians chapter one, then we can give adoration to God. How can a double minded person ever praise God sincerely? If we have the submissive mind of Philippians chapter two, we can come with supplication. Would a person with a proud mind ask God for something? We tend to see less need for God when we feel like we can do it ourselves, when we don't need his help. If we have Philippians uh, spiritual mind as found in Philippians chapter three, we can show our appreciation. A worldly minded person would not know that God had given him anything to appreciate. In other words, we must practice Philippians chapter one, chapter two and chapter three. If we are going to experience the secure mind of Philippians chapter four. Paul counsels us to take everything to God in prayer. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything is his admonition. We are inclined to pray about the big things in life and forget to pray about the so-called little things until they grow and become big things. Talking to God about everything that concerns us and him is the first step towards victory over worry. I'm going to say that again because somebody needs to put that to heart. Talking to God about everything that concerns us and him is the first step to, towards victory over worry. The result is that the peace of God guards our hearts and our minds. Is anything can't upset us. Anything won't get on our nerves. We, we develop thicker skin, more tolerance, more patience with one another. Maybe you remember that Paul was chained to a Roman soldier that guarded him day and night. And in like manner, the peace of God Stood, stood God over the two areas that created worry or possibly could have created worry. The heart, wrong feelings. The mind, wrong thinking. Paul realized that he was not a prisoner of Rome. The men that were assigned to stand guard over him day and night were not he was not their prisoner, but he was a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And we're either going to be a prisoner of sin or prisoner, prisoner of Jesus Christ, a prisoner of Satan or prisoner of Jesus Christ. When we give our hearts to Christ in salvation, we experience the peace of God, as stated in Romans 5 and 1. But the peace of God takes us a step further into his blessings. Romans chapter five, verses one through three, uh, the message version again says, developing patience by entering through faith into what God has always wanted to do for us. There are some things that God is just waiting to do for us, but we've got to get to the point that, that, that we enter in through faith into those things that God has always wanted to do for us. Set us right with him. Make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master, Jesus Christ. And that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that 
he has already thrown open his doors to us and windows. We find ourselves standing where we always hope we might stand. Out in the wide open space of God's grace and glory. Nothing hindering us from his grace and his glory. Standing tall and shouting our praise for him. And then verse three says, there's more to come. We continue to shout our praises even when we are hemmed in with troubles. Because we know how troubles can develop patience in us. And this does not mean the absence of trials on the outside, but it does mean a quiet confidence within. Regardless of the circumstances, people or things might bring into our lives. Daniel gives us a wonderful illustration of peace through prayer. When the king announced that none of his subjects was to pray to anyone except the king, Daniel went to his condo. I digress just a moment and open up his windows and pray as before. He prayed towards Jerusalem, towards his God. He prayed and gave thanks before his God, as we see in Daniel 6 and 10. And he made supplication as in Daniel 6 and 11. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, and the result was perfect peace in the lion's den. Daniel was able to spend the night with the lion in perfect peace, while the king in his palace could not sleep, as in Daniel 6 and 18. The first condition for the secure mind and victory over worry, again, is right praying. It's as if Dying to pay the price for our sins was not enough. So Jesus rose for our justification from the dead to set us right in our relationship with God. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to the way of perfect peace. That's all I've got for the night. I pray that I uh, said something that will bless your heart and that you will give God, the Father, Jesus, his Son, and the Holy Spirit an opportunity to bless you with the per per perfect peace that God desires that you would have. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, give us your peace, which surpasses all understanding and guards our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for uh, making the decision to spend a little time during our Bible study for this week. Uh, and uh, this is the first day of October in the year 2020. I pray that uh, uh, God will speak to your heart in a special way that you will be blessed in a special way. And in closing, remember to mask up, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And please vote. 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 Vote in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But vote. So long. Bye-bye.